Good morning. How are you all feeling? Are you feeling rested and energized, top of your game? I'll start with a riddle <laughs> to get your minds moving. Uh, Evan already knows the answer to this, so he can't answer. When is a car no longer a car? When it turns into a driveway. <clears throat> Audrey and I saw a news report this week of a school in Louisiana that was overrun with violence, fights, until some dads decided we're going we're gonna to fix this and they took it in shifts to be on campus and hang out with the kids and it ended all the fights on the very first day. And the kids said it's amazing to have fathers here and you know they'll, they'll give you a look if you're not getting to class or if you're starting to get into a tussle. And they said, the only thing, the downside is the jokes. <laughs> it's, it's terrible. They, they, they'll say, oh, look, your shoe's untied when it's not. And it's just not nice. And, and, but uh, some, some good ribbing is probably better than letting them turn into complete animals, I guess. Well, let's start in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the opportunity, Lord, to be gathered here in your presence and just pray that your spirit move amongst us lord god that your <clears throat> heavenly spirit fall lord god we pray for your your word lord god to come through your spirit to bless lord god heal move and touch in the name of jesus christ we pray amen good morning feel free to stand if you'd like Let's begin with My Savior's Love.
Regardless of what goes on around us and what storms rage around us, there's a peace in knowing that God sees and that he, if you just, you know, I've, I've had that come on me recently that it's enough to know that he's watching and it's enough to know that he's in control so that if at any time he's ready and willing and interested to step in and change things, he will. And so that knowing that he has his hands on every situation even when the storm comes and even when it gets difficult, you can rest and know it's okay. Our God's in control. And if this storm is his will, then I'm ready to go through it because I trust in him and his ultimate purpose and the outcome. Um, a much different situation than being a lost at sea, right? Where there's, you know, you're at the, at the whim and the will of the sea and have, there's no uh, thought into the process or the outcome. But we know that in his will, and as we submit ourselves to him and go through the trials of life, but under his care and control, that the outcome is his. And there's a peace in knowing that the outcome will be the outcome that he wishes it to be. It makes the storms much more bearable to know that, doesn't it? Yeah. I would like to ask uh, Claire to come forward to help take an offering. How I knew. Good morning. I want to tell you right up front. I'm not going to take very much time this morning because we're going to pray at the end of the service and lay hands on people and ask God for miracles because he is a miracle working God. We wouldn't be here if we didn't believe that, right? Amen. As you know, uh, periodically we choose a giving opportunity and that's in addition to our own homegrown missionary, Brother Skip Kincaid, that has uh, the Guatemex ministries in, uh, southern, uh, in the Southern Americas, in all of different Americas he has down there, Mexico, Guatemala, um, El Salvador, he has churches, different places. So the last opportunity that we gave to, if you recall, was a famine-stricken area in Ethiopia where uh, T and Safrash are from, and that was through the Pentecostal Church of God organization that we gave that. The board and I have agreed, and I'm so thankful that they did without question, and I believe that the Lord would be very pleased with us if we were to give to the situation in Maui. Would anybody, would anybody disagree with taking a special offering to go to Maui? Good, glad. 
you've all seen the horrific fire devastation and you've probably even heard about the situation with the lack of services that are being provided from the government and just basics of life not being available for these people and whatever that agenda is that's going on there we don't know but we are researching several funds uh, obviously we vet them for authenticity and we'll make our decision in the next couple of weeks and i plan to collect the offering on september the 10th Sunday morning, September the 10th. And as we've done in the past, the church will match the funds that we collect so that we have a nice uh, offering to give. And as I said, we are looking at uh, several options of uh, funds. One is called the Convoy of Hope, which is a faith-based fund and is doing very great things there to get people help. The other is, how many of you saw the building, the church building that was right in the middle of all the fire left standing without a scratch on it. That church is a Pentecostal church pastored by uh, Pastor Morocco is his last name. And they are housing, feeding, and clothing 300 people a day in that church, right in the middle of all of that going on. So that's another option that we're looking at. One of the ladies that I have my exercise class with said, I know him. He is a wonderful person inside and outside. Of course, the senior pastor is getting up in age, but that's Pastor Morocco, and his son has, um, has most of the day-to-day -day duties. But it was the senior pastor that said these people have nothing, and we're collecting, we're taking donations. This is him talking, of course, that they're taking donations from grocery stores and restaurants to provide whatever that there is to provide. And of course, that has to be shipped in because nothing was left in their general area to provide these things. So we will let you know a little bit later which of these funds we think is the best option for us. But I was really moved and touched by the fact that the Lord left completely untouched this church to help others, and they've stepped up to that, uh, to that call, and I thank the Lord for that. So with that said, I want to get right into what the Lord has for us from his word today. I struggled over which title to give this. Sometimes I don't even give you a title, but I always have to give one to Don because he puts it on the website according to the title and then he matches a picture to it. And then I write up a little blurb about what it's about. And that's what goes on the website. Well, I didn't know whether I should call this When the Remnant Prays or Present the evidence and i think i'm leaning towards the latter present the evidence and you'll see why in a little bit we're going to be reading in second kings 19 so you can start making your way there uh, first i'm going to sort of give you a little bit of background before we get to the reading as you know assyria had opposed Israel from the beginning of time just about when people moved there out of, uh, out of the uh, creation area and there was war between Assyria and Israel all the time <clears throat> and the king of Assyria, very wicked man, King Sennacherib if I am pronouncing that correctly and his chief goon or cupbearer, if you will, that was his official title, Rabshakeh. Rabshakeh was a real warm and fuzzy guy, I'll tell you. Second Kings 19. We'll be there in just a minute. I'm not reading yet, I'm just re, uh, reciting the lead up to that, the background. And I'll let you know as soon as we're ready to read. The Assyrians proposed to capture Jerusalem and take the throne away from King Hezekiah, the godly king of the southern uh, portion of Israel, kingdom of Judah. 
So he had torn down, King Hezekiah, in his righteousness, had torn down their idols and their high places and the altars upon which the Assyrians sacrificed their children to their gods. And Rabshakeh took a large host and came out. If you remember, he is the next in line to Sennacherib and came out to Hezekiah's chief, El Eliakim, taunting them and shouting blasphemies against the Lord, saying, surely you're not planning on listening to your king Hezekiah and his God because he can't save you from us. Those were his words. So Eliakim and his team went back to King Hezekiah and told him of the report that Rabshakeh had said and all that had happened and what was said. And Hezekiah called for the prophet Isaiah, the prophet of God. Now if you look at 2 Kings 19, verses 6 through 7, And Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall ye say to your master, Thus saith the Lord, Be not afraid of the words which thou hast heard. I'm going to read it again. Be not afraid of the words that thou hast heard, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. This is God talking through Isaiah, and he's telling the people, don't worry about the words that you heard. Verse 7, And behold, I, God, will send a blast upon him, and he shall hear a rumor, and shall return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. And Rabshakeh continued his blasphemies, during this portion. Now jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. And Hezekiah received the letter, telling of all the blasphemies of the hand of the messengers, and he read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it out before the Lord. Verse 15, And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwelleth between the cherubim, thou art the God, even thou alone of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. And Lord, bow down your ear and hear, and open, Lord, your eyes and see, and hear the words of Sennacherib, which hath sent him to reproach the living God. Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations and these lands, Verse 18, and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore, they have destroyed them. And verse 19, thou therefore, O Lord God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. Now point your finger down towards verse 29 and hold it right there for just a minute because I'm going to tell you the rest of the story. For the Lord did indeed hear the prayer of Hezekiah. And the Lord said in so many words to him, Hezekiah, don't worry about it. I've got this. Because of the blasphemies against me, I will put a fish hook in his mouth, excuse me, in his nose, in Rabshakeh's nose, and lead him around with a bridle, just like he's done to so many others and I will handle the king as well, because he will hear a rumor which will make it necessary for him to return to his home country, and he will be put to death in his own country among his own people. And in fact, Sennacherib's own two sons 
killed him with their swords when he returned to his home. But there's more. And God assured Hezekiah, I will further deliver you. I will send a blast. Do you remember that word we read? It is a death angel. And he will slay the people. And in fact, in one night alone, the death angel who was sent by God killed 185,000 men. And upon waking the next morning, the land was full of dead corpses. But there's more. And God said, and here is the sign that you shall know that I will do this thing. And now look at verse 29. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall eat this year such things as grow of themselves. And in the second year you shall eat that which springeth up of the same. And in the third year, you shall sow, and you shall reap, and you shall plant vineyards, and you shall eat the fruits thereof. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall yet again put down roots downward, and they will bear fruit upwards. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth the remnant, and they that escape out of Mount Zion, and the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. I'm telling you, church, just like Judah did, we have heard and we've seen blasphemies against the Lord, against the people of the Lord, against things that are sacred to him and that are concerning to us. When put in the same situation, Hezekiah did not mince words. He did not do the politically correct thing. He did not do the polite thing and tiptoe gently around the matter. No, he laid it out before God. He exposed the evidence before God and presented it to him in prayer. And God did deliver them. In impossible odds, God delivered them. And in the face of opposition, hurled at them that their God couldn't help them now, that they had no choice in the matter but to fall into line and be at the mercy of the stronger Assyrians against them. But God had a different plan. And God said, I know where they live. I know when they come in and when they go out. And he saw all the raging against him. And I'm telling you, God had the strength and the power and the angel power and the compassion on Judah. For he sent the death angel and he delivered them for his own name's sake and for his servant David's sake even though it looked completely impossible to man. It's early yet. I propose to you this morning that we spend time in prayer and that we do not do the politically correct, polite little prayers and tiptoe around the matter, but that we put the evidence before God, his evidence of what he said he would do against the enemy that comes against the church. Your evidence may be personal, or it may be about the church or our state, or our country, for sure. And it may be painful to you. And it may be already to the point that you're disillusioned with the evidence that's before you. But take courage. God still knows where the enemy sits 
where his abode is, where his going in and his coming out is. And he still has the, the, the power, the strength, and the angel power to get the job done to deliver us. We're going to put on some background music, Don, if you would. And I want you to find a spot where you're comfortable. I don't care if you sit. I don't care if you walk. I don't care if you kneel. Whatever you do. But I want you to put your evidence before God. And I want you to not mince words. And I want you to call it as it is to him. And say, oh God, only you can do this. Only you can deliver us from this mess. Only you can change a heart and change a leader, oh God. Only God can do these things for us. Will you do it this morning? Will you participate in prayer? Will you be forceful in your prayer and put your evidence out before him? If you don't, then you'll listen to fear in your mind and say, well, I already prayed and God didn't hear my prayer. Do it again. Do it again and put the evidence out there. If we don't have faith and believe that he is the God of the host of heaven and that he sits in the seat of the judgment of this world, then we're praying to the wrong God because that's who he is. That's who our God is. And as soon as we're through praying, we're going to call Tyler and the children, all three of the kids that are here happen to be my grandchildren. Jake's already gone back to school, and Claire and, I, uh, Claire and Evan go back to school tomorrow, and I want to have prayer for them. So will you find a pray, place to pray? I don't care, as I said, how you do it. I just want you to be honest before God and present your evidence. Will you? I'm going to just walk around because that's how I like to pray best. And I'm going to lay out my evidence before the Lord. Feel free. Move around. Do whatever you feel. Kneel. I don't care. It's up to you. In Jesus' name, we're asking this. Father God. Lord, it is not playtime. people I say to you I am God and I change not I am still the delivering God and I will deliver this country my hand is upon you my hand is upon this country and I know where the evil sits and my hand is upon that too you trust in me. You keep your faith and your eyes upon me, for I am God and I change not, says the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Every single one of you. Shakataso. Yiko shiamakasatai. Father, we love you so much. You are the God that never changes. Hallelujah. Would you stand this morning? Lord, there's little else to say. You are the God that knows the abode, <laughs> the coming in and the going out, and we trust in you. 
Thank you for this day. Thank you for this beautiful congregation, Lord. Go with each one with a blessing of God resting upon their heads. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.